evening crafty collective it is just after midnight here in detroit and so i felt like it was the perfect time to dive into the which way read for this week and to see what's on deck what's in store for us this week and how can those of us on the path of the weird way move through in the most advantageous way you know take advantage of the opportunities on offer and also just really um, mind our path as we're moving forward and mind how we're moving too I had like this initial download that came in about the importance of spiritual energetics at this time to really make sure that you're being a clear conduit that you're doing your energy clearing work you know, I felt really drawn to kind of have more subdued lighting tonight, even more so than normal, um, and just kind of sinking into a little calming, centering activity at night. I feel like the energy right now in the evening is really buzzing. You know, there's a lot going on in the collective consciousness and, um, you know, your openness um, might have you sort of taking on a bit of that energy and and riding that current out into the wee hours of the morning, you know, and so I feel like it, it's a good practice to sort of have these like grounding activities in the evening, um, things that kind of calm you down. I feel like a lot of the crafty collective has been very much um, in their yang energy, you know, in that more that red energy of Mars, like really taking action, really pushing, really following your manifestations through, you know, you've, you've done your workings, but now you're actually applying the work to your day to day life, you know, you're showing up, you're doing what you need to do to follow through with your workings and those visions that you're um, bringing into being, you know, you recognize that uh, nothing is handed to you for free. You know, you recognize that you can't just kind of do a working and then, oh, you know, I'm going to forget about that. That you actually have to back it up with tangible action that shows your investment of time and energy and what you're building, what you're creating. That this is part of the working. This is part of the working to sort of call yourself to the mat. And because there's been this big push of energy, all of this intensity um, recently, I just got over the past, you know, three months, that energy has really been building. And in the past three weeks, it's, it's really ramped up quite a bit. It's almost like uh, that final push, you know, before that vision, that ultimate vision you had in your mind when you called on the old ones or when you lit those candles, when you sent up your prayers, when you fed your gods with your offerings, when you dressed your altars and all the other uh, kind of, you know, spiritual pomp and circumstance, okay? I'm not trying to belittle it, but it's sort of just like these are props, right? They're props. Uh, they help us connect with that energy that we're actually already tuned into within ourselves. We don't need it, but ritual can be very important, right? It connects us to the root. It helps us actualize in a tangible way in our physical environment, something we can see, feel, and touch that reminds us. It acts as a prompt, you know, to our Atman, our higher consciousness, like, oh yes, this is what, this is what we're bringing into being. But it's all about that as above, so below, right? You can't just hang out up in the ethers the whole time or you'll end up wandering off into the alfalfa. There comes a point when you need to be a clear conduit, all right? So that energy can come through you like a lightning bolt and make contact with the ground. And that fire, that, that electric current that's released when it makes that content spreads out. And I just like saw this image in my mind's eye of a spider web of energy, you know? It's when you are able to really make that connection with that energy, that one energy that's in all and touch it down into physical reality. Actualize it. And how you do that? Through you, the channel, through your physical body. Your body is the wand. So whistle while you work. 
you know, do your workings. That doesn't just apply to, uh, you know, lighting a candle, doing some chanting, taking your spiritual baths, working with your blockbusters, doing your shadow work, remembering the light so you don't get lost in that making all things sound, mind, body, spirit, tending to the vessel, preparing the vessel for the vision to manifest through you. And how does it manifest through you? Through your workings, through how you show up in life, through what you're doing, what you're bringing forward. Um, I've really been working myself on creating a nighttime routine because I've definitely had a lot of downloads coming in at night. And I love to ride that current, you know, but if you don't, five, five, five on the clock when I said that, okay? Big change energy in the air. I think everybody can feel that, right? I think we all can feel that something's ramping up. The energy's ramping up. We're at an important uh, timeline juncture where we're, we're time hopping. Everything's about to radically change on an individual level, on a collective level, you know? We can all feel it. We're all tapped into that, right? Even people who aren't on the weird way, even those who uh, aren't on any sort of metaphysical path, they're feeling it. Everybody's feeling it, you know? But when you do a lot of workings like this, when, when you're um, tapped in on that level, you do a lot of channeling, you know? Uh, you hang out in the ethers a lot. That's kind of like home. It feels, it feels like home to be in such an expansive, free and open place, right? Where others find more safety and feeling confined, you find more safety, more belonging in this sense of never-ending expansiveness, right? And when you get into that space, it's very easy to just kind of drift off and forget, oh yeah, I'm, I'm in a physical body and I'm having a physical experience. And it's wonderful to trip the light fantastic out on the ether, but I have to remember as above, so below. You know, I have to root that energy in this reality. I have to bring it back to the marketplace, okay? And, um, you know, I've been winding down at night. And I've been drinking tea. I've been drinking some yogi detox tea. And, um, you know, you've heard of tea leaf readings, right? Well, I'm going to give us all a tea bag reading. Uh, <laughs> For this week, um, there's always some message that's on the little tag of the tea bag for Yogi Tea. Um, sometimes it's a quote, sometimes it's a fortune, sometimes it's both. Um, but I decided that I was going to let that be what sort of sets the tone for our week ahead. I haven't looked at it yet, so I'm going to find out what the message is from the great tea bag of wisdom, the all seen tea bag. Um, and I'm, I'm going to let it be the spring off point uh, for our read this evening. So we'll see what's coming in for us this week. And the message is, It is the light in the lantern which shows you the path, not the lantern. Well, isn't that... What we were just talking about, you know, the lantern being like this physical vessel, right? And the light, the light is the path, all right? Well, if the vessel isn't prepared, then it's going to block the avenue for that light to travel and make its way into material reality, right? Yeah, it's funny. A skeleton eating a banana we got here. Uh, you know, I don't know if this ever happens to some of you. Uh, it definitely happens for me sometimes when I'm really riding the energy, when I've been doing a lot of readings or when I've been doing a lot of psychic work. I find that there can be a tendency to just go so far off into that ether that you can forget about, you know, physical reality. You know, maybe some of you need to focus a little bit more on really nourishing your body, you know, making sure that you're, you're taking breaks, you know, when you're out there, you know, doing your psychic work, doing your readings, uh, doing your meditations, hitting the mat, doing your yoga, 
you know, remember to also feed yourself, nourish yourself properly, okay? So uh, you can really be grounded in the work you're doing, right? Because then you can accurately deliver the messages that want to come through. Uh, that was just coming through a little bit there. So I thought I would speak to it. I just noticed it on the cut of the deck energy. So we're going to see what's coming in for the crafty collective this week. I just wanted to open up with that download, kind of set the tone. We can tell we're going to have a work of, uh, work of week, I went to say. <laughs> I guess that is the work of the week. We got to work it, man. We got to get to work. We got to uh, do the follow through. We got to tend to the vessel and we also have to tend to the tasks that we actually need to complete to follow through with our manifestations. We can't just expect shit to be handed to us. We got to let that light work through us. So it's sort of like make hay while the sun shines. That's what I just heard. Make hay while the sun shines, you know, and maybe that's why you need to have more of a kind of uh, calming, wind down, bedtime routine, invite in that lunar essence. It's more cooling. It tempers that red yang energy come more into that yin energy you know like bruce lee said be like water you know uh, a fixed hand is a losing hand right be pliable be malleable you know move into this energy more instead of that strong hands on the hips type stance my way or the highway you know getting too centered in that egoic will and instead just now, you know, now that you've, you've done your workings, it's time to just do the work and trust how the energy flows. You know, give yourself an opportunity to cool down, you know, that fire at night. Maybe do a little bit of uh, moon bathing. Sit and look up at the moon and uh, just allow it to cool your emotions, to calm and, and soothe you. Ooh, I just saw this flip up, so I want to take that out before I lose it. Um... You know, get get that that silvery light shining down on you to sort of uh, do a bit of that tempering. You know, I just saw the temperance card in my mind's eye. That is the work of alchemy, right? Anytime you're focusing on just one aspect of your makeup, if you get too if you get too like polarized, you know, where it's either I'm in, either in my masculine energy, my yang energy, my woo, go-getter energy, you know, or I'm just completely uh, letting go, just in chill mode, you know, not doing a damn thing, except lounging about, lavishing and relaxing, which by the way, to me, sounds really good right now, um, but I don't think that that's the work at hand. It's really about balancing that sun, moon energy within us because macrocosm is reflected in microcosm, the microcosm of us. Everything in totality is reflected back within us. So it's really about us remembering that balance, you know, to every day there is a night. So I feel like Maybe a lot of you are burning the midnight oil. Maybe a lot of you have been staying up real late. Maybe your dreams have been really active and that's kind of been disturbing your sleep. Um, you know, I really feel like with this message coming in here, oh, you know, it always goes this way with this crafty collective read. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that, okay? I don't want to lose this. We're going we're gonna to keep the, um, the purity... <laughs> <laughs> of this message, okay, before we dive into this stuff. It always goes left. It always goes left-hand path in these reads. I don't know what is up with that, okay? Um, but I think it's really important at this time to balance those energies. Like, make sure that, you know, you're really aligning with the moon's energy. You're aligning with that lunar energy at night, which, yes, it can be visionary, but it is also a very silky, cooling, you know, cleansing kind of energy, that lunar energy. So maybe do a little bit of moon bathing. Maybe, um, you know, work on gathering some, some moon water as you build up to that full super moon in Sagittarius. 
on the 14th of this month. And, uh, you know, maybe you can make yourself like a lovely tincture, you know, put the water out there and charge it up with some crystals and some special herbs and maybe even do a ritual around this that becomes like a, a tincture that you drink on a daily basis to imbibe that lunar essence that's coming in really strong. And hey, we brought in the tea. So maybe you make yourself um, a solar tea, you know, a sun tea. And uh, you infuse that with all kinds of herbs and you take that in daily. Maybe a detox, you know, tea too, to give you a little bit of energizing, you know, as we move into this time where the sunlight is going to start growing, that light is going to start growing. Remember, it's about clearing the, clearing the channel, preparing the vessel, you know, for the manifestation to come through. There's something about this, balancing the energies making sure you're winding down, that you're creating spaces of relaxation, opportunity to just totally lounge, let go, sink in, and also feel. Because I feel like when you're doing a lot of that work, when you're really tending to the path, when you're putting things into motion, you're taking the tangible steps, you know, to follow through with your workings. You're not just expecting, uh, you know, spirit to hand it to you on a silver platter you're saying hey look i'm showing up i'm serious about this i'm for real i'm doing the work you know i'm not just going to ask you to help me secure my abundance i'm going to release the blocks within me that prevent me from having that abundance i'm going to change my habits that get in the way of me securing that abundance i'm going to do the work necessary i'm going to follow through I'm going to take that idea I have and I'm actually going to put it into action. I'm going to invest in it, you know? It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy, you know? So make sure you're tending to the vessel. You know, like that skeleton with a banana came in. Make sure you're, you're nourishing yourself. People underestimate how important it is to properly nourish your body, to have grounding. It was 1711 on the clock when I said that, you know? And that's all about really uh, providing the proper channel for that manifestation energy to come through. You want to be able to ground it. Well, you are that. How you are is how your workings will manifest. So if you're scattered, if you're chaotic, if you're ungrounded, that's how your workings will manifest. You know, uh, a priest, a priestess makes all things sound. All right. So you have to make the vessel ready. I'm going to look at this message first before we dive into that because, you know, that's an interesting message right there. <laughs> well, you know, it just really, it wants to go on the same tangent, so we're just going to have to ride this one out. I don't know what to tell all you. Um, I think a lot of you got some kind of messy uh, sexual entanglements going on here you know um and maybe you're wondering um if there's some stuff going on behind your back and you're not sure uh what's what because we see here that you've got no fucking clue um and this is also with the manifestations i mean i see this tail is holding this crystal that tail really looks like a wand um, and we do have some fire energy moving here um, to sort of call things into manifestation. You know, fire is the activating force. Uh, in Ayurveda, fire is pitta energy, you know, and pittas are the doers of the world. They make shit happen. Um, and, and maybe you kind of feel like, uh, you know, you've taken some action. Maybe you've done some workings. Maybe you did some workings. Uh, around, you know, somebody you had a sexual interest in, um, and it's gone a little bit awry, you know, maybe you were wanting to, you know, have somebody to share your wand with. And so you thought, oh, okay, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a little magic here, you know, um, maybe you use like some of that, some of that passion oil and dressed up a red candle, you know, uh, something to just kind of stoke your own passions. I don't really feel like this is some kind of working you did to like uh, project anything onto anybody else. But some of you did something to sort of like just feel your own mojo again, you know, like awaken that, you know, 
sexual creature within yourself, get in touch with your sensuality, just feel yourself again, you know, really moving into that like queen of wands, king of wands energy. And, you know, yeah, I see here with this card, uh, this is, this card is definitely about sex. It's turned in reverse. Okay. So this lets me know that that's not what you were doing. You know, it wasn't about like getting sex from others. It was more like you coming into full possession of yourself, your own sensuality, really feeling, um, feeling your own mojo. You know, I just keep getting that. that it's sort of like a, a spell to invoke self-confidence, but also with a bit of like sensuality mixed in there. And I, I think maybe you use some oils in your working that um, maybe you got them like at some little metaphysical shop, you know, maybe you saw like oil of passion or fire of desire oil or something and you thought oh this would be good like I, I'm really seeing like red candles and you dressed red candles with this oil and it was all about invoking that energy within yourself but it kind of like went awry you know we see this with this like I have no fucking clue right because now we got like this orgy situation going on here and this orgy card always cracks me up because there's like so many people involved, but this is like the most awkward orgy I have ever seen in my life. I mean, it just looks like a clusterfuck. It doesn't look like anybody's having any fun. Nobody knows what's going on. Everybody's dazed and confused. Um, you know, it's interesting. Like sometimes when you're working with oils that you get from a metaphysical shop, you don't know where you're getting. Like you don't know the intention that the people who made those oils had or were they a fit vessel? Should they be making those oils for you? I mean, I, I just like to say, I think it's wise like to really, in general, you know, make your own shit. And you don't need to get stuck in all these rules. I mean, I'm, I'm a Discordian witch, okay? So I fly by the seat of my pants and I work with fairies. So, you know, there, there, are, there are no rules in my tradition. It's very free flow, okay? Um, and you can do a spell out of anything. You can do a working out of everything. You don't even need to have anything on hand. Just by coming into the right energy inside of yourself, you can make that shit happen when you're working on that level of alchemy. But if you're going to work with an oil, if you just feel called to that, you know, or you feel called to work with candles, anything of this nature, you know, if you dress your candles, dress them yourself and dress them with shit that, you know, you made. They came from your intentions because otherwise you don't know what you're going to get. And I feel like, you know, um, I've known people who've worked in metaphysical shops before who do this kind of work where they're blending oils and stuff. And, you know, you don't want to know what I hear some of them say about what goes on when people are making those oils. Like some people just really don't care. And do you really want to work with that energy? Because then you get this kind of shit, you know? confusion, you know, the energy gets misdirected. I feel like some of these people also may have become really clingy that got kind of pulled out of the woodwork. I felt like things got very complicated in your love life as a result of this because you just started drawing this strange cast of characters to you and they were all interconnected with each other and it created kind of a confusing environment. I see you're in this space right now where you're like, Maybe I need to dip into the left-hand path a little bit. I got to call on some of that goat energy, you know? I need to put up some really solid boundaries and maybe cut some cords. There's quite a few uh, athames there, right? That's a lot of cords to cut. <laughs> oh, the Crafty Collective that I'm reading for, it's, there's always something like this every week. I always think, is it going to be, you know, more tame this week? No. I mean, really, come on, you guys. This is like meaningless garbage, all right? You don't need to be, uh, you know, focusing on this shit. 24, 24 on the clock when I said that, all right? This is all about you aligning with your purpose. Because when you keep messing around with this kind of crap, all right, you're fucked. You're fucked. You know? You're the one who ends up paying the price for it in the end, you know? When you do, uh, you know, these honey spells too, where you try to sweeten someone up to you, that may work temporarily, 
you know, but eventually you get caught with your pants down, you get stung, all right? But I understand, you know, that big sexy Satan is very alluring, right? Very, very alluring. <laughs> but, you know, he comes in as the heron bearer, all right? You know? It's not it's not what you think it is, you know. Sometimes you can get kind of caught up in playing with your dark side, that dark, delicious side, you know, because this is what I get. You know, you never know how a working is going to manifest. So let's say you do this working. You want to feel like you got your mojo back. You want to feel like you did back in the glory days, you know, when you were the shit, okay? <clears throat> and so... Uh, you draw those same kind of experiences that you used to have back in those days when you were operating out of your lower self, you know, you you hadn't progressed on your path as you did. Um, and yeah, you may have wanted to recapture that feeling, but what about elevating that energy? So you manifest from a place of an understanding of wanting to feel like you used to feel back then. And in the process, you manifest the same kind of shit you had back then. It's like this high school drama comes in because you are now holding that energy. You get what I'm saying? It's not that you called that in specifically. You weren't like, I want a bunch of drama. I want a bunch of these like fuck boys, fuck girls coming at me. You know, it wasn't that that was your intention, but because you wanted to invoke that same kind of energy you had back in the day, you created the same kind of scenarios you had back then, you know? I really feel like that. I feel that in the past, that was kind of your reality. You, you know, there were some messy situations. You were carefree. You were younger, you know? You played the field. You did your thing. Um, and there was a part of you that saw that as being in a place of power, you know? Being in a position of power when you were younger, you know? Before you get your shit correct. Before you understand things. But, you know, really, that, that's not, that's not where the strength comes from with this floppy key. You can't open any doors, you know, not any doors you really want to walk through on this path, operating out of that energy, you know. There's some of you, you know, it's not all men. It's not all men doing this, you know. We got the uterus with feet here, too, okay. You know, look at that. Do you see the pawn is in reverse, man? You know, beware of the way you set yourself up and the way you limit yourself on the path. Uh, you know, like on a yogi path, um, we call this, you know, getting caught up in the CDs. You know, as you progress on a, on a yogic path, you gain certain CDs, certain powers from certain practices, certain occult powers, for real. It's some real shit, you know. People really misunderstand what the path of yoga is about. Eastern mysticism is powerful, it's potent. Um, and the thing is, you know, the goal, the objective is to alchemize those stuck places. It's not about getting getting caught up in that. Like, oh, look at what I met, called into being and now I have this sense of power. It's about transcending the need to even have power. They always say, like, if you want to truly grow in consciousness, if you want to truly grow into your true power, which is the power that runs through everything, through me, through you, through everything you can see, feel, touch, and beyond, okay? The one consciousness. If you want to get there, if you want to move into union, to yoke, which is what yoga means, okay? If you want to combine with that energy, that essence, and have that running through you cleanly, um, then it's really nece necessary to transcend the CDs. So you get the gift, you get the power, it comes forward, you don't get attached to it, you don't go into your ego about it, and you go on your merry way, all right? So, you know, think. I think you're redefining how you view power, you realize you kind of pulled a fast one on yourself, but there's benefit that comes through it, like that devil energy, that big sexy Satan energy, it's alluring, and it's a trickster energy, but it's for your benefit. It tricks you like the same way that coyote tricks you, you know? Coyote medicine will have you chasing your tail, but in the end, you learn a really valuable lesson. You learn the way that the ego can play tricks on you, and it is very, very potent. I want to do a cut of the deck energy here. 
Yeah, see what I'm saying? The former child star, you know, you're like celebrating a glory day that's gone. It's dead and gone. You need to take that gasoline and you need to, you know, pour that shit on there and light a match to it, man. Just burn up that path. You're ready to jump onto the new timeline, right? We talked about that. We talked about that. Don't go for no back to the future shit, you know? Be present. Be present. That's your point of power. You know, you don't need to go back to those days of, you know, uh, being the playboy or, you know, uh, the girl who is just available to anybody who gave them the least bit of attention. You're meant to go beyond that now. So step forward into that. And, uh, you know, I think you'll really see things turn around. You'll see things really shift, but get to work, you know. Uh, that was the big message that came through this week. Get to work. The work starts with you. And make the changes you need to make to step into a higher potential. And then I think you're really going to see your manifestations follow quite potently. It's coming.